when building Rails with ERB partials or view component or anything like that, you're server rendered. Now that's perfectly fine in most use cases, but when you're doing international users, there's a hop, which you can't actually get around. So we're in Australia, we have customers in the US, and it's very slow. You can try preloading, but it just never feels crispy. So inertia acts as a router. It's the router for the front end framework. So it allows us to use our Rails routes, but with a React front end. So we can flick between pages and then render React components as the whole screen. You can use view, you can use, well, whatever you want. Very powerful. It means that we can keep a lot of navigation on the client side. So when you click, it'll just fetch JSON. It won't have to do a full fetch, so it's much quicker. And it only reloads parts of the page. It feels fast in general. All right, let's get started. We are going to create a new Rails app. We're gonna go Rails, new inertia, JS, start up a new app, fresh and clean. It just makes it way easier to install Vite. But I have done a video on converting from JS bundling and CSS bundling to Vite. So if you have an existing app, you probably need to follow that. Or if you started with Vite, good on you. All right. So I have noticed that when you do the new Rails install, it's doing the import maps, which is not what we want to use because we want to use Vite. But let's go and add inertia Rails. So we're going to go bundle, add inertia and it's underscore rails. So probably got to change into the repo first, add inertia rails there. Okay, so that's installed it there. Now we're gonna run the rails generate inertia install. So it's gonna install inertia inside of our rails app for us. Could not find the package JSON file. Would you like to install v Ruby? We sure would, so that it's doing its thing. So this is the v rails gem, which is a v Ruby gem for the, with the rails one, it's actually here. Uh, would you like to use TypeScript? Sure thing. Uh, what framework do you wanna use with inertia? So we wanna use React in this one. So that's good. So it's adding all the types there for us. Scripts, would you like to use Tailwind? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Cool, so it's adding in the Inertia React there, the latest, and then the V plugin. Uh, conflict, overwrite the bin dev. Sure. Excellent, so we've got the Inertia Rails adapter. So let's run Rails. So we actually will run bin dev because that should have Vite running. So we're running Overmind. We've got Vite running here. So let's go here, localhost 3. No. So that looks like it, it's overwritten our, it's running Puma. Oh, 3001. Okay, 3100. Okay, no worries. So it's localhost 3100. There we go. So we're running Rails, right? Now we have an example. So let's have a look. So it goes into, where is the example? Um, inertia. Let's have a look. I wonder if it's done it in the old button. And sorry, in the routes. Look at that. We've got the Kamal being installed here as well. So anyway, so let's have a look at our routes. So that's in um, conf so config routes. All right. So we got inertia example. There it is. So it's get inertia example. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. I'm going to just quickly chat you through how this all works. Right. Here we go. So we got inertia. We're running um, React. We can do the, the old count. And then here's the page. Right. So one of the things here. I guess we want to talk through is like, how does this now architect it? Because we're very used to going to app views and then having a look at our views here. Now, they, they don't exist there anymore. And the way we think about it is slightly different. So what we've got here, I'd set it up in app JavaScript and then page, okay? Now, this is where our pages live. So now the way you would structure this is, and I would recommend a very similar way you structure your views. And I'm a fan of versioning. So I would usually have something like pages v1, right? And then from there, I would have a new folder and this would be my model. So it would be, for instance, if we were doing a post, you'd have posts. So, so following the same kind of conventions, I think it's important to have similar conventions because you're working in a Rails app here. And then I'd have a new file and then this would be index.tsx. Now notice they are capitalized because it's a component. So it's a slightly different way. You could go um, lowercase if you wanted to, if you really wanted to maintain convention and it could be V1 um, posts lowercase and then index.tsx and we usually have index.html.erb right so just that's the mind mapping that you're doing here so that's the layout for there and then we have this entry point this is really important um this is the actual first thing that will be loaded up and then it will go from here to get the rest of the the um the javascript so this is your entry point file and if you look in and this is from v if we have a look here this is the file that's loaded in the head and it will be the entry points you can see that we're loading two entry points and the way we can see where that's happening is in our layer in our application and you can see it here we've got these vite ones here now what i would probably do 
to be perfectly honest, is get rid of this stuff. Because you don't need the style sheet link tab and you don't need the JavaScript import map. So I wonder if we just comment that out, see if that works, doesn't really. This is the one, you can't really do nice commenting. Anyway, so we've got now, we've got the Vite style sheet. We've got the React refresh and the client tag. Then we've got the TypeScript tag here for inertia. Um, we've got the application. And then this is for SSR, if we were going to use it. So basically broken down like this, yeah? This is for dev, so we'll do refreshing. Um, and then we got all the rest here. So that's what our file looks like. If we refresh, hopefully everything's still working. It is. Okay, so application, this is where you look for those files. This is a V kind of thing, but also we're injecting our inertia TypeScript tag here, which is in an entry point, which is, okay. This is the root file that will be triggered. And you can see it creates a new inertia app, the pages. It tries to resolve inside of the pages file, looking for the TSX. If it can find the page, it'll render it. Otherwise it'll throw this error. Uh, and here it's just creating standard create root with a render. And, and this setup here does a whole bunch of magic as part of inertia um, handling prop. Cool, so we've got that. So if we jump into the inertia example here, you can see a few of the little um, things shown off. So you can do imports uh, for style sheets like this, where you're just importing off the module here, but because we're using Tailwind, it's strange to actually have that. Um, you wouldn't have a style sheet there, you'd just be leveraging Tailwind. We're using use state, and we've basically, it's just doing a little quick show off. And this is the head tag, and you can see that it's set up the head here. Um, great, uh, and then we've got all our standard uh, React JSX code. All right. Right. So quite simple, um, but a little bit different to how we used it. Now inside of controllers, this is where we will see our normal stuff. So you can see we're actually using Rails controllers here to render out the component, right? And it's quite strange because usually you'd render out a view, but here we're actually rendering out an inertia component. We're telling where to find it. So that's inertia example. So that's this file here. And then we're passing it prot. And we're doing name is params fetch name world. So if we did this, so if we put name right here and said test, we get hello test. So we're passing props or params from Rails router through to our component by this props field here. And there's a lot of cool ways of actually doing this and serializing props themselves, um, which I can do in another video because otherwise this one will be way too long. But I think like a, a nice pattern of actually passing these props and how to think about these props because these props are provided a route level to the whole page. Now, so something that's really cool with Inertia as well as the concept of shared props. So what we have here is we have inertia extending the application controller. So this guy over here, and let's get rid of this because this causes a lot of problems for a lot of people. Um, what we can do here is we can create this inertia shared. So basically in the docs, you got this guide, you got the shared data, and you can do this. This is really cool. So what we can do here is inside here, we do the inertia share. Now this will expose it to as a prop, but I'll show you how this all works. So this is where you can inject data that is basically global right for the app so usually this is going to be like yeah current user your notifications and then you can see here it's saying if user signed in now this is a fresh app so we don't have any of this information right so i'm just going to get rid of that but what i am going to do is i'm just going to mock out current user so really what it look like it would be like one and then it'd be like name and then it'd be ken grief you know what i mean um so you do that and then in notifications you'd have something like this and then you'd have id one and you'd have like body um uh, sam did that right so that would be your notification and now we've got these the shared data right so what does that so what does it look like right so in the example controller we're only passing through props name okay pretty simple but then now if we have a look here let's grab so what i'll do here is i'll turn this props here and then here we're going to go const props and then it was name right so that's our standard thing you know look and then this is where you define your types we're not going to do all that right now but what we're going to have a look at is just going to console log prop so let's open up this page because we are using v it's automatically refreshed we've got the name here now i didn't reload the page so let's just refresh there we go so being a server rendered those props we do need to refresh the page not going to hot reload that but here we're going to go we can now see current user name and notifications all being passed through so inertia is merging those props together i'm sorry for that you can see it here you can see current name 
current user name and notification, right? Sam did that thing, there they are. So these are available now as props and we can just go along with our day. So the nice thing here with Inertia is we don't have to build an API. We don't have to do all that work. And it it's allows us to do some pages that are React, some pages that are Rails, rendered, server rendered. The things that don't matter or the things that you need to be server rendered instantly, you can either do them through React with Component or you can just be simple and just use the Rails stuff. Like if you have a very basic, you know, CRUD utility that you don't need all this and you, you like, you're not comfortable with React, then sure, you don't need to, but you can leverage it without having to create an API route and then do, you know, when you're getting different assets, usually you need to have different routes for every single asset or sorry, entity. You don't need that. We can do it very simply. We just pass it through the props here. And it's very clean because we can just say all the shared stuff comes through, all the route specific stuff comes through in a different way. So if you were thinking of this in terms of like a REST controller, where you had, for instance, a post model. So let's let's just quickly scaffold something. So let's go um, Rails G scaffold. Uh, let's do post, pretty, pretty standard. All right, so we got the posts there. Now we got the post controller, right? So here's our post. And we might as well set this up. So we've got the V1 post index. So let's just grab this inertia render here. So for our index controller, instead of, there's our post. We're gonna get post.all. And then we're gonna do this. We also probably need to just set up the model quickly. So inside of our model, sorry, not our models, inside of our migrations, we've got posts. And then we're just gonna see like t.body, um, text it body um, t dot string is title i think that's probably all we need for right now rails db migrate that boy oh we don't have a data c hopefully it's using sql line yep cool um let's see rails c let's go in here we're gonna go post dot create we're gonna go title it's one body yep all right post one i'm just creating some quick data here for us this is another post classic blog thing who cares about it, right okay so we've got that rendering so now we should have post and now what we're going to do here is we're going to render so we're going to go v1 slash post slash index right so we're going to render that inertia prop i'm oh, sorry that the page and then here's our props and what we're going to do here is we're just going to go post and then i think we can just go post to jason yeah okay and that should be enough uh and then what we're going to do here is let's just create a new page uh Component. So this is just going to be the edit page. Oh, sorry, index page. And we are going to props. We're not going to have children. So what we'd have here is we'd have post. And then this is not, you'd really define a title, right? But we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to say it's the array. And then we're just going to console log our props. And here we're just going to say this works. We need to create a route. Should have been there though. Scaffolded. Yep. So if we go post. There we go. Okay. So we're rendering our sick page. But now what we can see here is we're getting our props. So it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be too JSON. It should be two. I need to just figure out the call. It's actually smart enough to, let's get rid of this guy. It's actually smart enough to just, I think just, to, so if we run that, yeah, so it's serialized it. Now you, I would suggest, I wouldn't suggest serializing like that. I, this is just for an example, but you can see here. So we're getting our post body and title and post two and another post straight up there, right? So we're now in React world, ready to go. So here's our index. So we can actually just go through this and just go like um, post.map post uh, and then there and there's one here and then here we're just going to render a div and then here will be key it'll be post.id and here we're going to say post.title it's complaining because we've saying it's an object but there you go post one post right so we're now getting data from rails straight into a react page without like doing any api routes for me this is the key right you don't have to go and maintain a separate api endpoint now to manage and then do all your you know, have a library here to do calls out. You don't need to have like Tensor Query if you don't need, want it. Um, and you can just literally inject the props like this. Now, maintaining these props and becoming very, I mean, I think it can get messy for sure. But you just can, if you develop a convention of what gets passed through and what doesn't, there's so many things here. So I'm gonna do a series of these inertia videos because there's so many little little tr tips and tricks on how to do certain things. Like there's deferred props. There's a, the ability to reload only specific props and um, load all props except some. So when you wanna do updates, when you wanna do posts, all of those things I will do, you know, if there's some comments below comment and let me know you want to see that and i'll make make more of them but i'm finding this way of working in rails like i feel it's the best of both worlds like i really like react for creating very rich user experiences and i find that very difficult with stimulus um just because you're doing so much dom manipulation and trying to keep the state in sync whereas with React, it's nice. You create the state, you get the props, and then everything just flows down. You change a prop, everything changes. I love that. It just makes it so easy to build. And yes, it is more complex, but we're trying to deliver higher quality user experience. So I think it's a win. 
I think it's really good. I've done a really good job. It feels like it can handle most cases. Like I haven't really found anything where I'm banging my head and going, I can't do this. Um, because it is just a router in the end of the day. It's just a router. You use it like that. And it provides a whole bunch of tools on the front end as well, which we can dive into in future episodes walking through. But I just wanted to show you how you quickly add it in and then show you the basic structure. That's pretty much it. So once you're there, you can now build out pages. And every time you navigate pages, so what I probably should do as well next time is just show you how easy it is to navigate page and how it works um, when you do that. But we'll do that next time. So actual navigation and calling the router. But yeah, this was setting up. So we'll set up inertia. Next time we'll go a little bit deeper. But hope you hope you guys enjoyed that one and we'll catch you on the next one.